Eddie Izzard and just go, that's Eddie Izzard. He's funny. Yeah. But I don't even know if Eddie Izzard's on the list. Well, that's the point I'm trying to make. And so, so when you have this enormous <clears throat> power that nobody, I mean, when you think of how few people have that, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like Josh Hamilton hitting four home runs in, in one game. You know, only a certain number of people have done it out of every single game. There are thousands and thousands of games. And maybe 20 people have done it. Less than perfect games. 16 people. So I've the, hit four home runs in a baseball game. Yeah. So out of all the games. And in, and in our world, that comes with power that, that, that a comedian has that kind of thing. And when you have that kind of power, as they say, with great power comes great responsibility. And I know, you know, Barkley said long ago, I am not, I'm a, not role a role model. model. But the point being is that for your own career – you have to do everything you can to stay out of your own way because if you don't, you're going to be in a position where you're going to take away that power and you're not going to be in that world anymore. And sometimes you can come back. You look at somebody like um, Artie Lang. and again, Charlie Sheen. I mean, Lindsay Char- Lohan. Charlie Sheen. You know, it's amazing that you can come back because funny never dies. And you can, you can damage yourself – through self-destructive tendencies that people understand are diseases and they will forgive you. But if you damage yourself in a way where you do things that are just completely like lack all common sense, you're going to be in really rough shape because it's very like rare that mean, you can come yelling back. at people, mean, dressing people yelling down. at people, dressing people down, not showing up, disrespecting, not showing up. Not showing up. Not be, you would think not showing up would be the death knell of every gig. But like if Lindsay Lohan, like there's still 20 movies out there with Lindsay Lohan that she's going to do in her lifetime, assuming she lives long or lives a regular life. And that's someone that just like Tracy Morgan doesn't show up to comedy clubs. Cat Williams shows up two hours late to a comedy club, does, has his shirt off and wears a wig and says he's glip clop from the planet Pletar and says they don't pay me enough to give you motherfuckers my good shit, but they're always going. But they, they, you can't yeah. kill comics. It seems you can't. I mean, look, uh, I think we've all been to a Rolling Stones show. We're on the ticket. It says eight o'clock. There's no opening act, and at eleven o'clock they go on stage. They're the Rolling fucking Stones. They Man. earned where they were. I'm sure you watched Chris Rock's last special, and the first seven minutes was about Michael Jackson, and all the comedians listening might say, as they were on the couch, what the fuck is he doing Michael Jackson jokes for? This is Chris Rock. Well, motherfucker, he earned that because he did like three or four hours of specials where every single frame was was unconscious kind of original kind of thoughts and processes. It's socially prescient. Yeah. So if he earns the right to his commentary on Michael Jackson, and, and I laugh my ass on it, but I, but I know that, you know, it's not like the difference between black and white supermarkets, but still it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's there. Sneakers he, and diapers. That's all they think we're doing is running and fucking. But he earned, but he, <laughs> so amazing. So amazing. But he earned that <laughs> right. Jesus. When you're a comic and you're getting something or whatever, you're you're in a position where you're in, you haven't done in a while, or you're coming back, or you're going. It's like when you did the, you know, we talked about this. I hope you don't mind. You can edit it out if you want to. But I hope you don't. When you did the last pilot for CBS uh, with Chris Columbus, the director, which as of this airing might be picked up or not. Yes, it might or it might not. You never know. Maybe may, yeah, it might be. So as the, much. Everything you ever worried about in your life turned out exactly the way it was going to, regardless. So I can sit here, a man that you've known for 25 years, and I don't have a fucking care in the world as to whether or not this is the – you are now listening to the future because we don't know if it got picked up or not. But I can honestly look at my friend Barry and go, I haven't even thought – like 10 years ago, what did they say? What does it look like? How does it go? What is it? But and we'll I and, see I, how it and I believe that because it's like we talked about in past podcasts. It's all about patterns. Your pattern has always been, regardless of you thinking that things weren't going well, that you weren't working, that you hadn't done this or that. The fact is, if you can look at the trajectory of everything you've done and you were to do a graph, you would see that you always get a fucking job you always go in the room and figure out a way to get the that's job. that's because of you and something you told me when i was 19 years old and bananas 
And I said, what about this? What about that? What about this? And you sat me down. You put your hand on my knee because I was bouncing my knees up and down. You said, Jay, the money will come. The money will always be there. And that, for some reason, that's... Macy, could you open up this envelope (laughs) and just read what I said to Jay at the Spaghetti Factory on McDougal Street? You know, interesting what you said. But I've always had that in my mind. I've never... Worry, and it goes back to there's a great book, Savage. The guy wrote a book about meeting people in the jungle, in the rainforest. They have no concept of saving food. Like if you give these guys from this tribe like 15 jars of peanut butter, 18 loaves of bread, and a tree of bananas, they eat all of it once. They have no idea what it means to bring something for later because to allow the doubt in, you talked about fear. For these people in the rainforest, like they have a saying – I don't know what it is in their language, but it's the forest will provide. It's a blind faith that it will come because in a rainforest, if you allow yourself doubt that what if tomorrow it doesn't provide, that rainforest gets dark quick and everything closes up around you. That doubt of what if I don't catch a fucking bird or have a monkey on a stick to fucking have over a fire. and catch. So when you give these guys, the author uh, Kane, K-A-N-E, go to uh, jmore.com, go to amazon.com, get the book if you wish. It's, wish. it's called Savage. He was stunned that these guys would eat themselves until they vomited and then keep eating because they – and he'd say, why don't you save it for tomorrow? They didn't have a word for tomorrow. They didn't have a word for save because none of it made sense to them because for generations, the rainforest, the forest will provide. So you put that in me and then I read the book and it made me sink back up to what you had said. The money will come. It's a statistical anomaly of the guy that can't go make a living in this business if you keep being funny. It's so true, and 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 I I, I always believe that it will happen. I've always believed that. I you know if you go, like you could go. Down I get mad that it doesn't happen at the rate I think it should be happening. I rem- but I, that's God laughing. Yeah, I re- I remember recently I was with my wife and we saw an Orthodox Jewish woman with her husband, the rabbi, and there were just so many kids jumping and running around, like 10 kids, and I was looking at them, and I looked at my wife, I said, you know, just watching this, I could have a nervous breakdown. Why is this woman who's the mother, why is she so happy, and she's so calm, and everything's okay? And she said, Barry, don't you understand? She's bought into it. She's, the Torah says that, hey, just believe believe in the, what is right and what's positive and the world things will happen good for you if you just believe and and that's what it's all about and so i'm not religious per se in that way but i am religious when it comes to beliefs and what i think about comedy and i really believe that i always believe the money will come and sometimes the money comes and for you just to be honest with you i would honestly say conservatively that you have walked away from over $10 million worth of money in the past 20 years, probably $15 million worth, whether it was something that you were about to get that you didn't get, whether it was something that you said or did or some decision you made or whatever. And, it, you know, to be honest I didn't with, want to do Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, the TV show. That's right. Because <laughs> I had a film career. But what it does, what, 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 what matters most... That was a lot of money. That was, that was a long time. <laughs> that was a long time. <laughs> they... They they keep the power of no. It's unbelievable. Anyway. The power of no. They just kept right. coming back. What about for this? You don't understand. I am a movie star. I'm not doing tele. And now, you know, every movie star in the world. And I wasn't a movie star. I was just an egotistical 20-something. Well, hey, real quick. Uh, do you skip your favorite sporting events or concerts because you think tickets are too expensive? Well, think again. Scorebig.com makes live events affordable. 40% of live event tickets go unsold each year. Even when the arena or stadium is full, thousands of tickets are comped out or given away to make it look like a sellout. Scorebig.com works directly with the box office and other ticket providers to sell these tickets. Every ticket, every one on Scorebig.com is guaranteed to be between 10% and 60% off below retail price. Great seats from the front row to the rafters for every 
town and every team that you can think of. Purchase your tickets days, weeks, or even months in advance. There are no fees or shipping charges ever. It is impossible to pay full price on scorebig.com. You are guaranteed to save on tickets. They guarantee it. Register on scorebig.com this week and use the code J to get an extra $10 off your purchase. This week only, go to scorebig.com, click on the radio button, and enter the code J. That's J-A-Y. Always less than full price, never any fees. Scorebig.com. That's scorebig.com. Enter the code J. Don't forget to enter J-A-Y at scorebig.com. We were talking about negativity. One of the favorite (laughs) expressions I love is, a lie makes its way around the world twice while the truth is still lacing its shoes. Uh, That's true, but... The thing is, is that if there's a lot of people lacing their shoes, then they can stomp all over the lies. It takes a long time. It takes too long for my liking for the truth to win out. That's the battle I have with the negativity that we were talking about earlier. Is when people on Twitter say, um, you're a thief, for example, because of the whole Burt Kreischer story, which has been well documented between my podcast and the Joe Rogan podcast. Well, I just want to say this. You're in a, a unique situation, and I'll tell you why, and I just hope you don't mind me getting into this. That's why you're here. In your, this doesn't really work with Mark McGrath sitting there. <laughs> in your book, uh, For the First Time to the to the World and to, to the, your audience as a gasping whole. Gasping for airtime? Gasping okay, for airtime. Go time. to jmore.com and click that Amazon link and buy gasping. I'm just kidding. Sorry, but not really kidding. Um you told a story about something that a lot of comedians, you know, were aware of in the New York circuit, but this is before the internet. And you told your, you told your audience that you stole. And you told your audience that you went into Lauren Michaels' office when he approached you about stealing, and you denied that you stole. To Lauren. To Lauren. In my which, book, I've, I've thought... Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so you basically... I couldn't have written that book without being that honest. I know. And so, you know what? I should never put it in the book. <laughs> well, Because people go, well, you stole that thing from Rick Shapiro. And so, of course, and, I believe you and, stole from Burt. And that's the dilemma in Major League Baseball right now. With the, with the guy Cole Hamels hits the guy, he says, uh, he says uh, I, hit I, I, I hit him on purpose. Five-game suspension. Zimmerman hits Cole Hamels. I didn't mean to hit him. No suspension. The good people were fined five games. The guy who lied gets rewarded and doesn't miss any games. It happens all over. Examples no are all over. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. But the pattern... Hitting Bryce Harper in the back is a good deed if you're a Philly fan. But this is the thing. Cole Hamels will be remembered more positively than Ryan Zimmerman. World Series MVP. Even if he wasn't, all right, he would be remembered more positively because he told the truth and he was honest about the thing that he did, which was wrong, as opposed to Ryan Zimmerman, who lied about it. Okay. So in your book, to the masses, wow, what an amazing guy. He was honest about that thing that he did. To the alternative, negative comics all around that, that, that uh, sort of uh, are like bed bugs to our industry. <laughs> uh, they just come out at night when you're asleep, and then they fucking take a bite out of you, and then they go back to their little caves. Those are the people that can damage you in your own world, and that's what you're talking about. So the thing about Bert and the thing about the, the, the special and the whole thing and, and, the, and the routine and whatever, they come out. And they spread that that word. They suck the blood out of you, and then they go back to where they are. That's what they do. That's their lane. That's what makes them happy. They're tabloid comedians. They're vampires. Yes, but they're 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 like literally like the their star magazine of comedians. They have to say something negative because you don't say see something in the front of the New York Post. Uh, Matt Damon gives millions of dollars to fraternity in Iowa. No, you see, Matt Damon did this, and he threw this out, whatever it was. He hasn't done anything bad. but Or Matt Damon said this about Obama, and Obama shit Matt on him. Matt Damon was the guy that was in Costa Rica with the underage kids. We'll just say it right now. No. So the point being is that you're never going to escape these guys. They're always going to say negative things. I mean, people like – I mean, I've known – uh, I, I don't mind saying it. I've known uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, you know, he started in Boston. I've known him uh, my whole career. Um, and 
you know, Joe Rogan is a fiercely loyal person in terms of uh, what he does and how he does it. He's an incredibly hard worker. He's disciplined. Uh, he has a great family. He can beat the shit out of everyone he in this room. He can beat the shit out of everyone in this room. But his lane in terms of Red Band and whatever it is and the podcast and whatever, the lane is let's take something and put a spotlight on something that I perceive is a, is a, is a negative thing and let's inflame it and let's bring it out and flush it out and get people talking about it. And there's people like that all over, and that's how they get viewers. A lot of people get excited about those conversations and things like that. 